Hey guys, welcome to our channel that is Adu Mandla. So in today's video, we will be discussing about the topic Ashoka's Dhamma, reading through rock edicts and pillar inscriptions. So uh, here you in this uh, on your screen, you can see the edicts of Ashoka, uh, that is uh, uh, the rock edicts that he had uh, inscribed in, in different uh, regions of his uh, of the empire he was controlling so we will be discussing about them uh, in later slides so let's start our discussion so why we are discussing it because uh, uh, in today's da hindu newspaper there was an article by rajiv bhargava and uh, he is a political scientist and uh, also uh, an honorary fellow uh, at the center for the study of developing societies so he has written this article in the context of war that is going on between ukraine and russia and uh, he has focused upon the theme that how human civilization has again and again resorted uh, to war and uh, how it has ignored uh, the other methods through which the disputes can be uh, resol resolved and also he has discussed uh, about Ashoka that how Ashoka was changed by the Kalinga war that happened in the 8th year of his reign and how after that and after seeing the loss of life and property in Kalinga war how the Ashoka completely uh, this uh, uh, completely left this path of war and chosen the Dhamma Gosha that is the, uh, the path of uh, peaceful means through which uh, to, to, to resolve the disputes. So let, uh, uh, let's start our discussion. So four things we will be mainly discussing. A basic history of Ashoka we will be looking at. And then we will be looking at Kalinga war and then change of policies uh, that the Kalinga war brought. And also what the concept of uh, Dhamma basically was. So uh, on your screen you can see the Mauryan Empire map. So uh, you can observe the extent of the Mauryan, Mauryan Empire. So it covered almost entire Indian subcontinent and uh, it extended up to Kandhar uh, that is in present day Afghanistan and in towards north it, uh, it, uh, it, 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 it extended up till Takshila and uh, Pushkalavati and in south you can see Brahmagiri, Siddhapur uh, areas where it, it was controlling and uh, basically the main center of power uh, was in northeast and but uh, mainly in Magadh and uh, and later later called Patliputra and uh, present day that is present day uh, Patna in Bihar. So <clears throat> the thing is that uh, little background about this is that you might be knowing if you have read history uh, ancient history that in the later Vedic period uh, with the use of iron techno technology uh, one other phenomena unfolded that is the coming into existence of large states uh, and we find reference to 16 Mahajanpadas that came into existence uh, and the map of those Mahajanpadas and the areas they were controlling is uh, uh, on the on the on the uh, uh, left side of your screen or right uh, sorry right side of your screen that is uh, here you can see 16 Mahajanpadas uh, from north it is Kamboja, Gandhara, Kuru, Matsya, uh, Shurasena, Panchala, Kosala, Malla, Vatsa, Chedi, Avanti and uh, southernmost is uh, Asmakka, uh, also known as Asakka. And then uh, Kash Kashi was, uh, was there, Vajji was there, and then Anga and Magd. So these were the 16 Mahajanpadas that came into existence. So they were basically uh, states that were co that were fairly controlling large uh, territory and uh, they had sophisticated uh, administration system. They were collecting taxes uh, through agriculture and they had uh, 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 standing army. And uh, we can say that uh, the, 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 the state had come, in, uh, come uh, up to its, uh, we can say, uh, mature state, state uh, st the state as we see to it, it today, it it had it had matured uh, in that in in that period in in, in the time of uh, when when Mahajanpadas came into existence. Uh, though the state was not uh, democratic, it was monarchical. Some uh, uh, some republic uh, uh, republic territorial areas were there, um, but uh, not all were uh, uh, republics. Uh, uh, mainly uh, the, the monarchies control these uh, Mahajanpadas. So uh, these 16 Mahajanpadas, they were uh, uh, in conflict with each other to expand uh, uh, their 
sphere of influence and ultimately out of these 16 mahajanpadas one mahajanpada uh, uh, became prominent that is the mahajanpada of magad uh, magad in present day bihar so there were multiple reasons for the rise of magad that is uh, uh, the, uh, it was surrounded from all sides uh, by the hills and uh, it was uh, uh, there was a forest area close to it uh, and uh, from where uh, elephants were in abundance uh, the elephants uh, uh, were used in uh, warfare so that's why uh, uh, the available, easy availability of elephants contributed to their success and also there were reserves of iron uh, iron ore through which weapons can, uh, could be made so that was an advantage and also rivers uh, were passing through uh, through it uh, providing uh, a, a fertile land uh, for cultivation um, leading to high revenue for the state and also um, uh, rivers can be used for uh, trade and all those things and uh, with trade uh, uh, there is also the revenue that state collects and also the prosperity that comes to the empire so these were the main reasons of rise of Magad so uh, Magad was ruled by multiple dynasties and uh, uh, chronologically and one of those dynasties uh, was Moran dynasty uh, the, the, the dynasty to which Ashoka belonged so Moran dynasty was fo uh, founded by Chandragupta Maurya with the existence of Kautilya uh, co commonly known as Chanakya uh, today as well who, who, who wrote uh, a famous treatise on statecraft that is Arth Shastra so uh, he uh, Chandragupta Maurya founded the Empire Maurya, Maurya dynasty by overthrowing Dhananda that is the last of the Nanda dynasty's uh, king so Nanda dynasty was ruling prior to uh, Maurya dynasty and Dhananda was the last ruler which was overthrown by uh, Chandragupta Maurya and uh, after Chandragupta Maurya uh, the, the Bindusara his son controlled uh, the empire and he, he remained emperor for 25 years and after that Ashoka assumed the power uh, and uh, he became the emperor so let's move on to the next slide yeah so prior to Kalinga war uh, we will be looking at uh, where, how uh, uh, what was the attitude of basically Ashoka before the Kalinga war so uh, Ashoka was the greatest of modern dynasty kings who ro uh, ruled over this this vast parts of the Indian subcontinent that I have shown you in previous slides? So uh, before uh, becoming the emperor, he he remained the viceroy of Takshila and Ujjain respectively. So uh, he was a viceroy of these regions, important pro they, these were important provinces. So he was controlling these provinces. And uh, according to Buddhist tradition, if we if we read Buddhist sources, then we come to know that that uh, we are told that he was so cruel that uh, bef uh, before uh, before the Kalinga War, before joining the Buddhism, before adopting the Buddhism as a religion, he killed his ninety nine brothers to become the emperor of Magadha. And uh, this image of Ashoka as a warrior is further reinforced by the fact that his father uh, uh, the Bindusara he died in 272 BCE uh, but uh, Ashoka became the emperor in 268 BCE so there was a gap of four years so it 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 uh, it, uh, it uh, kind of uh, indicates that there must have been a struggle uh, for for the throne um, and uh, multiple multiple there were there might uh, there could have been a mul uh, there could have been multiple contenders for the throne um, and though 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 they, those may be the brothers of Ashoka though the number that the Buddhist sources tell us they, it is fairly exaggerated number because 99 brothers precisely. Uh, uh, it it it, uh, it uh, easily and uh, uh, the it one one can e easily guess this is an exaggerated number. So, but yes, there was a struggle for the throne. So, uh, let's move on to the next slide. So, Kalinga War. Let's see what the Kalinga War was. So, the Kalinga War was fought in the eighth year uh, of of his reign of Ashoka's reign. So. Uh, various source there there are various sources of information through which we know about uh, this war and also about uh, the Ashokan uh, uh, Ashokan 
काइंड ऑफ द रीन ऑफ अशोका एंड अबाउट द पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ अशोका वी वी हैव सोर्सेज लाइक इंस्क्रिप्शन एंड रोकडिप्स सो ही बेसिकली अशोका वॉज द फर्स्ट इंडियन एम्पर हु काइंड ऑफ टॉक्ड विद हिज सब्जेक्ट्स डायरेक्टली so he um, he got installed his inscriptions or rock edicts on which he he inscribed uh, his uh, message uh, uh, for for his subjects to uh, uh, that who who were expected to follow uh, those uh, that that message that he spread through these pillar um, uh, pillar inscriptions or rock edicts he issued in his reign so uh, that was basically an attempt by the king to uh, directly uh, communicate with his subjects so here in uh, in the in the right hand uh, on the right hand of your screen uh, you can see the edicts of ashoka uh, they were basically covering all these regions that were that were under control of uh, of Mo, uh, of ashoka so uh, you can see kandhar in kandhar also uh, there were edicts and uh, in then the shahbaz giri and then there is mansera and in uh, in southern india also uh, these uh, inscriptions were there so this is a map of basically uh, uh, where he had got his uh, uh, pillar edicts or minor rock edicts or major rock edicts uh, go, uh, got installed where he has installed them so uh, one uh, from these these inscriptions or rock edicts we come to know of his other two names that is uh, uh, the uh, devam piya and the piya dasi so uh, he he loved to call he used to call uh, call himself devam piya and piya dasi that is beloved of the god and uh, the beautiful looking the uh, these uh, these are the meanings of these two names so in 13th major rock edict we know about his war of kalinga so we come to know about uh, his war of kalinga uh, that he fought in 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 8th year of his reign through the 13th major rock edict in which he uh, he has written about uh, the entire thing uh, that why he fought kalinga and uh, how how he felt regretful about that after the destruction uh, destruction of life and property and how uh, how how he remorse uh, that war so uh, it is uh, this uh, mil military expedition uh, only that we that we know uh, of of a, of, a, of a mauryan king but uh, particularly of uh, of ashoka so uh, there is only uh, one uh, one military expedition that that we know from sources that is of kalinga and uh, and he uh, after the war of after the expedition of the kalinga he basically uh, felt very remorseful because of the destruction of the life and property property and he all together left this uh, 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 policy of uh, aggression towards uh, other uh, to, uh, towards other <coughs> territorial or neighboring territorial powers so it was a basically punitive war because earlier kalinga used to be the part of the mauryan empire so it had broken away so uh, particularly due to that reason the campaign was quite ferocious and brutal that's why there was a lot of destruction there uh, in this war so uh, here uh, you can see his rock edict of ashoka that is in dholi odisha so it is in odisha kalinga is also um, the ancient name of odisha so uh, the destruction that was there uh, it it uh, the ashoka noted that uh, he was personally responsible for this and he deeply regretted it so he was so moved by the suffering of the people of of the of the end of the uh, uh, of the destruction of the property that he all together this policy uh, of aggressive policy which he called bedi gosha uh, that is uh, the aggressive uh, uh, foreign policy and he then adopted a religion uh, called buddhism and he became a, a peaceful uh, peace loving king so uh, he uh, after that he propounded the message of the dhamma gosha 
his uh, dhamagosha was his new found values um, they they were, we can't necessarily say that they were directly the teachings of buddhism but yeah um, uh, there was some similarity between uh, between the teachings of buddhism and what his world view became after the kalinga war so he spread this dhammagosha dhammagosha thing uh, through his rock edicts and inscriptions that he got installed in various parts of his empire so important aspects that uh, uh, that we have to look uh, in uh, look into of ashoka's dhammagosha are that that uh, uh, major themes were that uh, were basically first thing he uh, he denounced the worldly worldly rituals so he said uh, that the rituals that uh, that are uh, that are uh, that are performed on various occasions like uh, on the birth of a child on marriage and on uh, on various other occasions these are uh, these are not worthy so uh, instead of that he 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 said that Uh, there must be respect for each other and uh, there must not be uh, 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 any sacrifice animal sacrifice for these rituals and uh, he preached compassion for all the living creatures also he advised that uh, uh, one should be um, uh, a very uh, very kind towards uh, uh, his or her slaves and servants so uh, other thing that was uh, that he was propagating was respect toward the elders and also uh, he propounded the generosity towards uh, brahmins and shramanas shramanas uh, can uh, you can uh, in uh, you can translate it into uh, translate into english uh, uh, it means uh, basically monks uh, and uh, he uh, under and when when we uh, read his inscriptions we also uh, get the idea that uh, through this dhammagosha he he also meant that there must be mutual respect among the people who belong to different sects or religious communities so sometimes people uh, or or historians assume that uh, that he 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 was a kind of secular uh, king so he followed secular policy but this is a very plain or general explanation and it would be too general to say this uh, the thing that he he was saying that there should be mutual respect was that that it, it was not merely uh, a secular type of thing it was a step ahead of it the, uh, he said that uh, the uh, the different religious communities that exist uh, though they have different viewpoints though they may be conflicting but one should not pre- keep on praising one's religion and keep on criticizing others others uh, other person's beliefs and uh, there should be a respect mutual respect for for the uh, values and beliefs uh, belief systems of others so uh, that is a quite good thing that we need today as well uh, in times of conflict and he uh, he said that uh it is not necessary that uh, that war is uh, war is of uh, uh, inevitable if you want to win over the uh, people uh, he he talked about then after the kalinga war he talked about the uh, dhamma gosha that is the conquest of cultures through the spread of dhamma instead of using force or violence so as i have told you this uh, dhamma gosha thing type and what dhamma was basically about so uh, from it uh, you can get an idea that it was basically about uh, uh, non uh, not committing any violence or uh, uh, it was a kind of code of con- uh, code of conduct uh, an ideal code of conduct that uh, that every subject was expected to follow so there were practical uh, benefits also of uh, this preaching because at uh, the times in which he was ruling there were various uh, sects that uh, that were coming into existence in indian subcontinent um, uh, na- which are now generally grouped into the uh, term heterodox sects and also uh, there was uh, uh, ritual uh, uh, people were engaged in ritual worship all those things so he 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 had to uh, manage all those things so uh, through his spread of dhamma gosha he uh, and and through the spread of uh, the message of peace and harmony see, he also tried to minimize the conflict within uh, within uh, within uh, within the subjects uh, uh, with, within the subjects that were uh, in, in in his control and and within the territories that were governed by him so this is all about 
today's discussion uh, you can read the article uh, from the newspaper uh, the hindu newspaper and uh, this uh, that article also basically talks about his uh, dhamma gosha idea so if you like this video then do ensure that you like this uh, uh, video and ensure that you subscribe to our channel and uh, if you want to uh, join our telegram channel then you can check our description box uh, the link is given there and you can join our telegram channel using that link and also you can download our app uh, that is uh, available on android as well as ios so merely you have to search edu mandla you will get the app and you can download it for various updates to remain in touch with us so thank you guys have a very nice day ahead